In today's video, I'm going to share five basic tips that ought to get you started with woodland photography. So the first tip is definitely bring a tripod. Within a forest it is way darker than you actually think it is. Even though the sun is actually out as you can see here behind me, the sun is coming through the forest. It is just way darker than you think it is. Right now when I have my optimal settings for this scene here in my background, currently ISO 50 to get as clean a photo as possible. F14 to get everything in focus. Even though I might shoot at F11, I will still have a long shutter speed. So the shutter speed right now is actually two seconds. So even though I got went down to, let's say, F8, I would still have a shutter speed of half a second. And that simply means that you can't handle it. Well, you can and then just shoot a lot, but definitely bring a tripod. When it comes to the sturdiness of the tripod, it is less important. Personally, I bring my travel angel from Benro everywhere. And for me, it's the perfect tripod because it's lightweight. It is carbon fiber, so the shakiness of it is different from an aluminum tripod. But in, in this particular case, there is not much wind in the forest. Generally, there are not much wind in the forest because the trees obviously works as a huge wind buffer. So that's not a big problem. I also use my ball head that comes with the Benro tripod. This ball head is super practical. It's super easy to get the camera off the tripod. I also have another ball head which I use when there is a bit more wind and I usually use that in Iceland or in the Faroe Islands but when we are in a forest in Denmark or wherever you are in a forest you don't really need to think too much about the sturdiness, the quality of the tripod and so forth. So the next tip I want to share is that golden hour and blue hour and all the classic landscape photography times of the day you want to go and photograph might not be the optimal for woodland photography. Now, right now we are actually nearing the end of the day, so we're close to the golden hour. But a little bit earlier, the sun would have been further up in the sky and would have been able to cast its beams down through the leaves I have around me here. I need to find another place in the forest to actually get the effect. But definitely think about when you go out that golden hour, it's not given that you get anything good there because the sun's beam simply can't get through all the trees and branches and leaves. And especially here during summer when there are leaves on the trees, it's next to nearly impossible to get any light through golden hour. So what is it actually you need the light for? Well, obviously light guides the eye. There's nothing new in this. This is how it is in landscape photography and in any kind of photography. But especially in a scene like this, where you can have actually the leaves here around me backlit or at least sidelit, makes a huge difference when the sun comes out. Now I visited this scene before and I got a beautiful shot here and well right now hopefully the sun will come out in just a minute or two and you will be able to see the difference. If not I will show you the scene with light and the scene without light just in a moment.
Another and probably a little bit better example is this one from my first Tales from the Forest episode. When I got this photo, the sun were between 30 and 40 degrees above the horizon, way out of the golden hour. This enabled the light to come down through the big trees and hit the small tree. The light makes all the difference in this photo. Without the light, the small tree wouldn't stand out from the background and there's a big risk the viewer wouldn't know where to look. Another example is this one from the redwoods in California. We have the light coming down through the trees, backlighting the fog, branches, trail and Sophie making her silhouette stand out. So the next tip is in regard to what lens you should use, or more precisely what focal length you should use. None of the photos I've released so far from my woodland photography has been below 24 mm. And the reason for that is if you go wider than 24 mm, you increase the risk of including a lot of all the specular highlights you will see up here in the top of the forests. The reason why you do not want to include all these specular highlights is that they are part of a high contrast area. They will create a high contrast area and high contrast areas in your photos drags attention. And if you do not want to show the top of the trees, you probably don't want to include them. Now the scene I'm at here is a great example of that. So right now I'm shooting at 24 millimeter and as you can see I'm including quite a lot of the top of the trees. I have a lot of attention dragging highlights up here above me. So as you can see now I'm in the exact same scene. I've just moved the camera further back and zoomed into 70 millimeter instead. In this way I compress the scene more and that basically means that I have the branches up here framing the scene and I don't have all the specular highlights to drag attention. All your attention ought to be right here on me as I am the place in the photo that creates the highest contrast. Me and the surrounding light here. And of course the background. The first photo I showed in this video is a great example of that. In the top of the frame it is possible to see the sky. However, if I zoom in I crop out that distracting part of the scene. The same is the case from this example. As you see in the video here filmed at 24mm and the photo photographed at 24mm, I made a crop to a 2x1 format in the editing phase. I did this to get rid of the specular highlights in the top of the photo. And in this photo from the third episode of Tales from the Forest, I had a few too many holes in the top of the photo where I could see the sky through the tree. I decided to move a few meters back in field and the change of perspective was enough to get those holes out of the frame. The few that were left I could remove in Photoshop. Now I'm not saying that you can't make amazing woodland photography with an ultra wide angle lens. I have found plenty of locations that works great with an ultra wide angle lens. But, and there's always a but, that is not the kind of photography I want to make, at least for now, in the woods. Those highly dramatic, almost skewed photos where some roots or some branches are coming straight out in your face. Now I want to transmit the calmness and the magic of the forest. And by putting in dramatic elements such as dramatic perspectives, it doesn't really come across as very calm. So it's very important that you think about what focal length you use. So the next thing I want to talk about, the next tip, is to not rely on fog. Fog is amazing. It's, it's a technical aspect that helps you so much to separate all the different details in the forest. But if you are locking down and wholeheartedly only go and shoot when there is fog and depend 100% on fog, 
then you are only making one kind of woodland photography. You are making something very moody, something very ethereal, even eerie. And if, if that's all you're into, fine, of course, perfect. But as I've already demonstrated in this video, you don't need to depend on fog to create beautiful and amazing and interesting woodland photography. If you want to make optimistic photos, I want to show the beauty of summer and create a warm and, you know, like upbeat photo that brings joy and not moodiness, then obviously fog is not really an element you ought to pursue in the photo because it brings another mood. So what I'm trying to get across here is obviously shoot with intention. Think about why you pursue what elements. Think about why you include what elements in your photo. Why you choose the composition you choose. Fog is not the holy grail in woodland photography. I'm not the only one to say this, but there is definitely That's how it is to create a block in the middle of a forest that is in the middle of a town. There are a lot of people running here after work. So to conclude, don't rely on fog. Fog is amazing. It creates amazing moody photos. Helps you to separate the trees and all the stuff uh, in the forest. But you are also locked down to a certain mood. If you want to make something optimistic, don't rely on fog, rely on light. So the last tip I want to share is scout, 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 and then scout some more. A scene differs hugely dependent on what angle and perspective you see it from. Is there anything in the foreground that you don't want to include in the photo? Is there something in the foreground that you want to include in the photo? How does the background look compared to your focal point? Let's say you are photographing a little tree. Does it make a huge difference if you walk a little to the right or walk a little to the left? All those questions you need to ask yourself. How is the light now compared to in 10 minutes? And from what angle does it look optimal? A forest is a hugely complex area or entity. So obviously you need to look at it all. Right now I am in Risco, which is a forest in Aarhus where I live. And it is a big old forest. There are many old trees, but there's also a lot of young trees. And the different areas of Risco does look very different. So obviously I will get hugely different photos depending on where I'm photographing. So the last and probably most important tip is to scout and Look around, look at all the trails, leave the trails. If you're allowed to leave the trails, we are here. And have fun, have fun. So it has started to rain quite heavily now. I don't know if you can see it, so it's about time to get home. I hope you enjoyed these five basic tips on woodland photography and I hope it's enough to get you started and think about the process of woodland photography. Definitely if you have some kind of like inner feeling that you want to go out into the woods and, and photograph, I can highly recommend it. It's not easy but it's not as hard as people do it either. So go out there enjoy it and experiment and become better.